Great video. How would you like to win an iPad in our free superfan giveaway? And please stop spamming the comments. Ah, hi, man. Love your snooty remarks in every video. LOL. And can somebody please Google snooty? Yes! Right. That's right, it's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and these are Pocket Now Daily Recap for last week. So on Monday I asked you if you have many friends that have switched from iOS devices to Android devices because the news were that Eric Schmidt was saying that a lot of his friends were doing so and therefore he wanted to push a tutorial for everyone. We have 751 comments out of which, for example, Andre Philippe says, Most of my friends have Android phones and mostly all of them want to change to iPhone. Biggest reasons are iOS and the screen size. Um, I thought that's actually the other way around, or at least that's what I'm noticing. But yeah, I do have a couple of friends that do want to move back to the iPhone. Then Rel says, Almost all of my friends move from iPhone to Android. 1.5 billion Android users can't possibly be wrong. Well, those people that have bought those like really cheap $70 Android phones don't feel the same, buddy. And then Wooly says, HTC to iPhone 4S to Nexus 5. Transfer files in iDevice is such annoying, and sorry, buddy, transferring files on any mobile platform is actually terrible. We need Windows Mobile for that. Then on Tuesday, I asked you if you were interested in the Moto G and if you were buying it because Motorola was launching it in the United States. And we have 225 comments, out of which DJ Atomic 5 says, Nope, I'm happy with my Nexus 5. And buddy, for what you paid for that phone, I don't blame you. Then Roy says, I just ordered the 8 gigabyte Moto G today. Smiley face and buddy, how can you survive with 8 gigabytes? I mean, seriously, and for 20, I think it's $30 more for the 16 gig model. How can you survive with 8 gigabytes? And then Utu Badano says, It's kind of smarter to buy Google Edition phones off contract since you're not stuck in a contract, kind of. Um, buddy, I don't think you know anything about the Moto G. Number one, it's off contract. Number two, um, you can buy three, almost four Moto Gs for the price of any Google Edition phone that's not a Nexus device, obviously. Then on Wednesday, I asked you if you thought that the iPhone shortages were real or fake because the news were that Apple finally was able to meet the man with the iPhone 5S. We have 415 comments out of which Clark Evans says, completely fake. It's happened too many times too often and they need to pull it together. And you know, I'm gonna have to agree with you there. Seriously, Apple needs to figure it out. Why is this such fanfare, Meet people making crazy lines to buy an iPhone and then you buy an iPhone and you have to wait a couple of weeks to get it. That's just dumb. I don't know how really how people wait for that so long. Then Steph says, I bought my iPhone 5S one month after launch and it came two weeks later. Seriously, two weeks. I mean, you could just walk to the store to Best Buy and buy pretty much every other phone that you want and not buy an iPhone. I really don't understand the United States fanfare over this phone. And then Varo2471 says, I think that the man is real. The demand could be real. What we don't understand is why is it that Apple is never, and I mean never, able to meet it. Then on Thursday, I asked you, what did you think about Google blocking applications like CyanogenMod installer from the Google Play Store because the news were that Google had just blocked it because they said that it incites people to lose their warranty after rooting their phones. And we have 252 comments, out of which, for example, Anthony Benita says, Google blocking CyanogenMod is crazy. It sounds like that they're going against their own open source philosophy. And you're completely right. I mean, they sold this as open source. And just think about it. You could get a lot of rooting applications applications. A lot of apps that are currently exclusive to people that root their phones, like for example, I'm thinking about Clockwork Mod and I'm thinking about any other ROM manager, for example, and yes, you can get them on the Google Play Store. I do not understand what the problem is with Cyanogen Mod, for example, especially how good it is. Then OVG says, OVG, all right. I already bricked my device with CM in the past, so I say Google did it right by not allowing apps to void your warranty on the Play Store. Um, buddy, you know, it's really your choice. You don't have to use it. You don't have to do it. And even after you download the service, you're not really forced to install it. You can keep it there. So I think that no, and especially because you can siloed applications anyways. So what's the point? Then Ryan Castle says, Google has repeatedly said Google Play is not open source. Um, Android is open source. What's the point of the store not being so? And finally, on Friday, I asked you if optical image stabilization or the lack thereof would be a deal breaker for you to buy a phone or not because the news were that the Samsung Galaxy S5 is not bringing the technology. We have 225 comments out of which, for example, Danny Fallis says, I really don't think OIS is needed. It's good to have, but I don't really care. I think that IR is more important than that. And you know, 
It depends on the phone. It really depends on the phone. Like, for example, the iPhone 5S doesn't need optical image stabilization. They've done something really interesting with the software, and the same case goes for the Galaxy Note 3. So it depends on the phone. And Jabber Jar says, the camera itself is not a deal breaker for me. It's important, but not a deal breaker. Buddy, in the case of most people, for the amount of money that you pay for a phone, the fact that there are companies that figure it out and companies that don't is a deal breaker for most of us, especially in the tech world. Then Roblo Oliver says, OIS makes the camera slow. It takes good photos, but the experience is so slow on the Nexus 5 and G2. You know, I did have that experience with the G2, and yes, the Nexus 5 has that problem, but I think that it's a software optimization problem because Nokia Lumia customers do not have this problem. So again, it really depends on the phone. Some companies get it right, some companies don't. In my particular case, I would rather have it than not have it at all, but again, it depends on everybody. That's it for our Pocket Now Daily Recap. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you want to get your comments featured, number one, keep them short. Number two, stick to the point. And number three, try to get some thumbs up. It helps us spot them a lot easier. Be sure to also follow us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter at Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you next week.